looks like the guy from <laughs> from that movie <laughs> to all the boys I loved before. But it's just the hair, not the face. Okay, the face. It's very Filipino. Okay, <laughs> not celebrity. <laughs> Again, the PDF files that I shared with you, those are not campaign materials. I'm not running for public office. Those are for <laughs> our class tonight. Those are reading materials. All right. So we're live, sir. Um, once again, good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, IFNG. Good evening, 9.09ers. And once again, we're here for our reading lecture series. And we're going to tackle regarding true, false, and not given with our very own Sir Malone Viardo. Sir? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for having me once again, IFNG. Um, it's truly an honor and a pleasure to be given this platform so I can share what I know about the IELTS exam, particularly the reading section. To all our viewers who are watching us right now from the Middle East, I would like to say good afternoon. I'm pretty sure it's still afternoon there. It's like minus five hours. So yeah, it's afternoon. For people in the Philippines, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that you're in good hands. I hope that you're able to watch this video without any problem. And if you're encountering something, if you're dealing with something, I pray that you will be able to overcome those challenges and those problems eventually, all right? So our lecture tonight focuses on identifying information, also known as true, false, not given. And when we're dealing with that type of question, it cannot be helped, but we're going to talk about yes, no, not given as well, also known as identifying the writer's claims or opinions. Let me share my information or my PowerPoint with you. All right. So once again, my name is Marlon, also known as Lone. I am one of the coaches and lecturers at 9.09er IELTS Review in Tutorial, the number one IELTS Review Center in the Philippines. So that's not a claim. It's a fact. That's why <laughs> I have all our trophies here. <laughs> We're not making false claims at Niner. Maybe you're thinking, oh, this guy's just bragging, you know. It's easy to say you're number one. No, the, the trophy says it all. Um, and I'm going to impart with you my experiences and knowledge of the IELTS reading exam. If you want to get a score like I did in the actual IELTS reading test, then please listen. Sir, why should we listen to you? What's your score in the IELTS reading test? I got Three. If you want to get three, listen to me. <laughs> no, just kidding. My score is three times three. So I got a nine in the IELTS reading exam. Um, I took the academic module. <laughs> Not three. <laughs> Why should I listen to you? You only got three. Three times three. I got a nine. So I'm not going to claim that I'm the only repository of wisdom in the whole world when it comes to reading. Definitely at neither alone, we have other people who got good scores in the reading exam. But I, what I will share with you is at its core, what we teach at our, with our students or what we teach to our students at Niner plus my personal experiences with the exam. So a little bit of personal touch from my end, okay? So for everyone who's watching right now who is not familiar with the IELTS exam, so let me just give you a quick overview. IELTS, also known as the International English Language Test Testing System, is a standardized international English exam that you have to take if you want to work study or live in an English speaking country. So obviously that includes the US, the UK, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and Ireland. So the IELTS has two components, the written components and the speaking component. The written, com the written components are the listening, reading, and writing section. The speaking component is the speaking section. In most cases, you will take all the written components in one sitting. For example, if you registered for an exam on February 14, Nax Valentine's. <laughs> if you registered for an exam on February 14, you have to take your listening, reading, and writing exam on that day. What about your speaking test, your speaking section? You will take it typically two or three days after the written exams. Sometimes the speaking section can be conducted on the same day as the written components, but there will be a gap of one or two hours between the written components and the speaking component. Now, why am I talking about that? Like, what does it have to do with what I'm talking about today? So today we're going to focus on the reading section. And the reading section is the second component of the written exams that you have to deal with. Before you get to the reading section, you have already spent 30 to 40 minutes on the listening section. So what does that tell you? Before you get to the reading section, you're a little bit tired already. So the listening exam already took away some of your energy. Having said that, please always remember, when you're preparing for your IELTS exam, prepare realistically. The test will not only 
you know, try to challenge your mental abilities, it will also challenge your physical abilities. If you are not preparing for your test realistically, then your stamina will fail you. That's why when you prepare realistically before your test, the goal is to improve your ability to take or handle the physical challenges of the exam. You're improving your endurance. You want to get to the reading section still capable of finding answers even though the listening section has already took away some of your energy. Most of our viewers, I believe, are nurses. So I suspect that you need to take the academic module of the IELTS. If you're going to take the academic module of the IELTS, you will be required to answer 40 questions in 60 minutes. The good thing about the reading exam is that you don't need to come up with your own answers. All you have to do is to look for answers in the sources given. So what's the source of your answers? The source of your answers are three long passages. When we say long, they're typically seven to 800 words long. All right? So three long passages for the academic module. You have to find the answers to your 40 questions from those three passages within 60 minutes. Now, there are probably some people here who will take the general training module. Maybe you're in the minority. But just so you know, if you're going to take the general training module, you will also answer the same number of questions within 60 minutes, but you will find your answers in five short passages and the last one would be long, okay? Maybe as long as your academic passage, your typical academic passage. So the number of passages for the general training module could be five to six. It could be four short passages, one long passage. It could be five short passages and then one long passage passage. Uh, for the sake of those who don't know, the difference between the two modules is that you can only use one for a specific purpose and the same goes for the other module. You can only use it for a specific purpose. So if you want to become professionally registered in an English-speaking country, let's say you want to become a nurse, a med tech, a PT, a doctor in an English-speaking country, you want to be an engineer, most likely you have to take the academic module. If you're applying for student visa, most likely you have to take the academic module, especially, especially if you're going to pursue studies uh, or postgraduate studies or bachelor degree. If you're pursuing a bachelor degree, if you're going to enter a bachelor degree program, bachelor's degree program, then most likely you have to take the academic module. But if you're going to pursue an educational program, which is associate degree or lower, maybe you want to get a diploma or just a certificate abroad, then most likely you have to take the general training module. You also take the general training module if you're applying for skilled work visa. Okay, so those are the big differences between the two. So to summarize, academic module, if you're a healthcare professional, if you're applying for student visa and your program is a bachelor's degree program or higher, general training module, you're going to study abroad, you're going to enter an associate degree program or lower, or you're applying for skilled work visa. You can even use general training module for permanent residency. You really need to be clear about what module you need to take because you don't want to end up taking the wrong module. That would be a waste of time and money. The IELTS is available in two formats. We have the paper-delivered format and the computer-delivered format. All right? So for those who will be taking the paper-delivered exam, the way that it works is you will be given a test booklet that contains all the questions and the passages. You can write whatever you want on the test booklet. You can answer questions on the test booklet. You can encircle or underline words in your test booklet. However, it is important to make sure that you've written all your answers on your answer sheet. Because at the end of the day, the examiners will be checking the answer sheet. Yes, at the end of the test, you will return both the test booklet and the answer sheet but what matters are the answers on the answer sheet. Even if you get all the 40 questions right, if your answers are in your test booklet, then it's pretty much meaningless. In most countries, you will be required to use an HB2 pencil if you're taking the paper-delivered format of the IELTS. But in the Philippines, you will be typically asked to bring a Mongol number two pencil. Okay, keep that in mind. So people who are taking the test outside of the Philippines, HB2 pencil. People in the Philippines, most likely you have to bring a Mongol number two pencil. By the way, it's also worth mentioning. I think I forgot to say this earlier. In countries like New Zealand and Australia, they start with the writing section. So whereas in the Philippines and in most countries, we start with the listening section. 
in Australia and New Zealand, they start with the writing section. But consistently, the second section that you have to deal with is the reading section. I think it makes it worse if you start with the writing section. You will be super tired. <laughs> you will be super tired before you get to your reading section. It's like all your brain cells have been exhausted for the writing exam. Now, do I have people who will be taking the computer-delivered test in this Zoom meeting? Can you give me a, a high in chat? <laughs> If you're going to take the computer deliver test, can you give me a high in chat? Show me that you're with me. <laughs> are you with me or are you against me? <laughs> okay, nobody's responding. I'm just going to be under the assumption that there are people here who will be taking the computer delivered version of that. Oh, thank you, Melsa. There you go. Oh, thank you, IDCRR. Wow. Thank you, Rodilin. All right. So these are the people who will be taking the computer delivered version of the test. So I have here a video from IELTS itself. I hope that you can pick up some useful information here about the computer-delivered version of the exam, particularly in the reading section. Okay, let's play it. In the reading test, the text appears on the left and the questions on the right. To see all the text and the questions, you'll need to use both scroll bars. For some questions, you need to choose an answer. If you want to change your answer, click on a new answer. If you want to leave a question unanswered, click on the answer again. To look at the next question, just click on the question itself. For some questions, you need to choose more than one answer. If you want to change any of your answers, Click on the answer you want to change and then click on your new answer. If you want to leave any of the questions unanswered, click on the answer again. For some questions in the reading test, you need to choose which paragraph or section contains the information listed in the table. Remember to scroll to read all the text. For each question, click on the correct space in the table. If you want to change an answer, click on your new answer. If you want to leave the question unanswered, click on the answer again. For some questions in the reading test, you need to click on a heading for a paragraph or section and move it into the gap. If you want to change your answer, move another heading into the gap. If you want to leave the question unanswered, move the heading back. And for some questions, you need to write your answer on a gap in a diagram. If you wish, you can also highlight sections of text. To do this, left-click and drag your cursor over the section of text or question you wish to highlight. Then right-click and select the Highlight option. To remove highlighting from the text, right-click on the highlighted area and select Clear. If you wish to remove all highlighting from the screen, right-click on a highlighted area and select Clear All. You can also make notes on a section of text. To do this, left-click and drag the cursor over the section of text or question you want to make notes about. Then right-click and select the Notes option. Your chosen section of text will be highlighted and a yellow notepad will appear. You can write your notes on this. Click 
on the cross in the notepad to hide your notes. To see your notes again, click on the highlighted section of text. If you want to see which areas of highlighted text have notes, move the cursor slowly over each area of highlighted text. If a small orange box appears, it means that the highlighted text contains notes. To remove notes from text or questions, right-click on the highlighted area and select Clear. Okay, so for people who will be taking the computer delivered format for the IELTS, I hope that you learned something valuable from that particular video. So key differences, if you're taking the paper delivered version of the test, you have to write down your notes or whatever observation you want to write down on your test booklet. Whereas with the computer delivered version of the test, the software that you will be using has a feature that allows you to take notes. In the paper delivered version of the exam, you can underline or in circle words in the passage, whereas in the computer delivered version of the test, you can highlight words again using a feature provided by the software that you will be using. Okay, don't worry, Miss GL. It's okay that you're late. It happens to the best of us. What matters is you are here with us. <laughs> you're here with us, and although we're not talking about the TOEFL today, I still remain, as you call me, the father of. <laughs> Complete the sentence, Miss Gladys. The father of? <laughs> Up to you to complete it. Tofelism. There you go. That's why I love Miss Gladys. She's very supportive. Thank you so much, ma'am. So by the way, guys, um, maybe if you're our student at Niner, you're wondering, how come I don't see you uh, in our coaching selections? I cannot pick you as my coach. Um, lately, I've been focusing more on the TOEFL, the test of English as a foreign language. It's an alternative to the IELTS. If you're struggling... With the IELTS, then consider taking the TOEFL. But that's a topic for another day. Of course, we're here to talk about the IELTS. But just to explain myself for people who are looking for me, like, how come I can't book you? You said you're one of the coaches. Yeah, that's the reason. Most of the time, I'm spending my days with my TOEFL students. But I still teach IELTS from time to time. IELTS will always be my first love. A charot! <laughs> February 14, first love. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so now let's proceed to the meat of the matter. Oops. What's going on here? Let's go now to... Okay, so uh, other key differences between the academic and the general training module. So when you're dealing with the academic module, expect to encounter a passage that contains a detailed logical argument. Some of your passages may contain nonverbal information like bar graphs, diagrams, pie charts. Be aware of that. And there will be instances where a passage will contain jargons or technical terms. When that happens, do not panic. Because some people, what they do, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I don't know what this word means. Don't panic. Okay. In cases where there are jargons, typically there is a glossary that will help you understand the meaning of the word in the context of the passage. However, there are situations where people encounter you know, words that they don't really use a lot and that also scares them. My general advice, if you are reading a sentence or a passage or a paragraph and, and you encounter a word that you're not familiar with, don't stress out. Just try to look for context clues. Like how is that word used in, in the context of the passage? Or you also have the option to ignore that singular word. Sometimes one word doesn't really determine the answer to a question. There's also no point in stressing yourself if you cannot figure out what a word means. If that's the case, skip the question related to that weird word and keep moving forward. Never sacrifice one question for the entirety of the exam, okay? 39 is always better than 40. You have 40 questions, 39 is always better than 40. If you have a perfectionist mindset, most of the time that can be your own enemy. So it's better to cut your losses. Okay, I can't answer this question, so what? Move on. You know, there are still other questions and maybe I'll do better with them. It's like with your love life, you know. <laughs> Cut your losses, move on. <laughs> can you relate? Mm. <laughs> Who can relate? <laughs> if you can relate, I can understand. Why? Because it's almost Valentine's. So that approach also works in your love life. <laughs> 
And it also works in the IELTS reading exam. Okay, cut your losses. If you don't know what to do, move on. You don't deserve someone that's using you as a second choice. <laughs> you don't deserve someone that's not sure about you. Okay, you you, you move forward. Okay, <laughs> sir, why are you doing this to me? I just want to forget him. I just want to forget her. <laughs> Worry ka pa. If I know, if I know you still want to be with your ex, nako. Bad yan, bad yan. You still want, exes are exes for a reason. <laughs> yeah, you know, deep inside you're hoping, you know, you, you, you'll get back together with it. Just like, I'm hoping I can still answer that question. No, accept the fact, you know. If you don't know the answer to the question, let it go. There are probably other questions that you can answer. No? Just like your relationship. No? Stop wishing that it's you and that other person again, no? So if you heard that music and you understand Filipino, <laughs> that song is for you, whoever you are. <laughs> Anyway, going back. Yeah, there could be jargons. There could be jargons. And if you don't know what they mean, no, there are glossaries provided. And then finally, another characteristic of the academic module. Remember that it is used as a proof of English language proficiency by people who are trying to get into universities in English-speaking countries. Having said that, the passages in the academic module are relatable for people who will be pursuing higher education in English-speaking countries. And again, when I refer to higher education, what I meant by that is bachelor's degree or higher, you know, master's degree, PhD, okay? So those are the types of reading passages that you will encounter in the academic module. Now, what about the general training module? Okay, for the general training module, um, you will deal with passages that concentrate on social survival, workplace survival, or general reading. Um, expect to find brochures, announcements, newspaper or magazine articles. You can also find some instructional manuals there. All right, so there you go. That's what you can expect from the academic and the general training module, respectively. Now, for every correct answer, you will be given one point. After that, the examiners will get your total number of correct answers. That will be your raw score. And your raw score will be converted to its equivalent in the IELTS. If you're going to take the academic module, you probably want to get at least seven or higher in the IELTS exam, especially for a lot of our nurses out there. If you're going to the U.S., the U.S. does not have a strict requirement on what score you should be getting in the reading section. But like I said, the safest score would be seven. But don't lose heart if you get lower than seven, especially for people who are going to the US. But for people who are going to the UK, I think they are very, very strict on that, that you need to get seven or higher in the reading section. So if you want to get seven, at least seven in the reading section, you have to get at least 30 correct answers. Okay, at least 30 correct answers. All right, what's the safest score in the IELTS? It's nine. <laughs> the safest score in the IELTS is 9. If you have a 9, you can go anywhere. But, of course, don't be disappointed if you don't get a 9. The, the point of that statement is it helps you program your brain for success. You want to aim higher. All right? Aim for the highest possible score. Aim for the sky. For if you fail, you will reach the clouds. Okay, I'm targeting 9. My effort falls short. My score should be 8 or 7. It's still within the score requirements for your visa. Right? So always aim higher. If you fail, you'll still, get, you'll still get the score that you want. For people who will be taking the general training module, you're going to use a totally different scoring conversion system. So unlike the academic module where you only need 30 points to get a 7, in the general training, mo general training module, you need to get at least 34 correct answers to get a 7. 7 is also a skip score for people who will be taking the general training module, especially if you're applying for permanent residency, you want to get at least seven. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty of this because majority of our viewers are nurses anyway. I'm, I'm just discussing this because it is possible that there is someone out there who's watching this video and they're probably thinking about getting the IELTS or registering for the IELTS, but under the general training module. 
So some things to remember when you're taking your IELTS reading exam, make sure for paper delivered test takers, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure that you are writing on the correct side of your answer sheet. Maybe you know the, the correct answers, but you're putting them beside the wrong number. Think about that. Your answer to question number one is correct, but you place the answer beside item number 21. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Be careful of that. Be mindful of what passage you are reading. You're probably already spending 40 minutes reading one passage and you're wondering, why can't I find the answer? You're looking at the wrong passage all along. We recommend that Niner, and I think a lot of IELTS experts also do this, we recommend that you write in all caps. Why is that? All caps helps your examiner understand what you've written. Number two, you can avoid capitalization errors. This is especially true for people who will be taking the paper-delivered version of the test. If you're taking the computer-delivered exam, you, know, you don't need to write in all caps, but writing in all caps in the computer-delivered exam won't be a problem. Again, this is only for the reading section. Okay, let's clarify that. Only for the reading section. Writing in all caps in the writing section is not recommended. That will be considered as a grammatical error. There are ways around that rule, but for the most part, we don't recommend writing in all caps in the writing section. You will be penalized because you did not follow the rules for proper capitalization. Again, writing in all caps is accepted and recommended in the listening and reading section, whether you're taking the paper-delivered or computer-delivered version of the test. Avoid using contractions. Okay, The IELTS is a formal English exam. Therefore, informal language like contractions have no place in the test. Also, according to examiners, if you go to their website, they say that contractions will not be accepted. So please never use them when answering questions. In the reading test, as much as possible, answer in verbatim. What does verbatim mean? What you see is what you write. Some of you may be tempted, oh, hey, 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 hey. This is not the spelling of the word color. Okay? Remember, there are differences between the spelling of words uh, in the English and British vocabulary or dictionary. All right? Here we go. So let's say, Brits love using you. Color. Humor. In your passages, these words were spelled like this with the you. But you decided to like change the spelling because I know this is how you're supposed to spell it. No. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Write in verbatim. What you see is what you write. Brits also love their S. Their letter S. They don't like the, the letter Z. Okay, They call it Z in countries where British English is used. Z, but Z in American English. So in Australia, they also call it Z. All right. So we say organize, visualize with an S, but with a Z sound. Organize, visualize with a Z sound. So in your head, you're thinking, no, that's not the correct spelling of the word. You're supposed to use Z. No, don't do that. Okay? Answer in verbatim. What you see is what you write. I think the good thing about the reading section, it's almost difficult to create or make spelling errors, right? It's difficult to make spelling errors. You're just copying words. <laughs> so I hope you don't misspell words, all right? Never in the history of any English exam has wrong spelling been considered. Correct, okay? And for questions, and I have other colleagues that will probably cover this, sentence completion questions. For questions that require you to complete sentences, you have to observe correct grammar, all right? Because even if your answer makes sense, if it violates the rules of English grammar, for incomplete sentences, chances are your answer is wrong if you're violating the rules of English grammar. Thankfully, we're not going to talk about sentence completion today. You might end up getting confused. So we're going to focus on true, false, not given, and yes, no, not given later. Finally, final two points. Don't forget to read the instructions and follow them. Countless people, countless people have gotten bad scores in English exams due to their inability to follow instructions. I don't have the time. I'm in a hurry. Sadly, I have students like that. I cannot get them to read. So whether you're a non-Niner student or whether you're a Niner student, whether you're a student of our center or not, this is my reminder to you, never get tired of reading. Trust me, never get tired of reading, read instructions. Because guys, if you start living in an English-speaking country, you're going to be doing a lot of reading as well if you want to blend in. Take it from me. Okay, I lived in Australia for one year. I had to read a lot of things regarding taxes, regarding employment, yada, yada, just so I can 
adapt to my new living conditions. If you cannot be bothered to read a few sentences for instructions, not only are you preventing yourself from becoming a reader, you're also putting yourself in a lot of trouble. Not only in the IELTS exam, but come the time you start living in an English-speaking country. Because unlike the Philippines, <laughs> where we're so considerate about people, right? There's already a sign that says, no, jaywalking. Hala, jaywalking pa rin. You don't get apprehended, right? You don't get punished for that. Try doing that in a different country. I dare you. Try doing that. <laughs> Try doing that. So reading instructions and following them, it's very important. Not only in the IELTS, but even in your life, in your new home. Be it in the US, Australia, the UK, Ireland, or Canada. And last point, do not leave any question blank. Make sure to answer all of them. But I don't know the answer, Sir Lone. Guess it. Guess it. If you're lucky and you get it right, that could be the difference between a good score and a bad score. All right? Guess it. There's no harm in guessing. You can even make an educated guess. So now let's get to the meat of the matter, okay? How many of you, <laughs> how many of you love <laughs> True, false, not given. Yes, no, not given. I think this is everyone's favorite question, no? How many of you love... <laughs> is Gladys, do you like this question? <laughs> RR, do you like this? <laughs> Who loves... <laughs> of course, that's a joke. I know nobody likes this question. Who hates this? <laughs> you can be honest with me. It's a safe space. <laughs> Who hates true, false, not given? Like, I can't figure it out. Sir... <laughs> Whenever whenever I deal with this question, sir, every organ in my body is sweating. <laughs> my fingers, my nose. <laughs> so how dare you say it's my favorite? <laughs> Nobody here likes true false not given, yes, no, not given. Not even one person. <laughs> now, I can completely understand. Because again, uh, it's a very difficult question. But, Difficult does not mean impossible to conquer. One of my favorite basketball players, Chris Paul, he said this once, everything you want is on the other side of hard. Oh, di ba? Everything you want is on the other side of hard. So, yeah, it is hard, but eventually, once you figure it out, you will realize that, hey, once I figure it out, this is going to be a breeze. Also, I think it will serve you well, ladies and gentlemen, if you start speaking life in your heart and your head. I always quote this famous philosopher. I love this mantra so much. According to Rene Descartes, you think, therefore you are. If you keep telling yourself that you suck, that you're a bad reader, that your English communication skills are not good enough for the IELTS exam, you're programming yourself to fail. Because you think, therefore you are. When you speak it, it becomes your identity. identity. What you think becomes your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions form who you are. So stop underestimating yourself. Yeah, you're not good at this immediately, but that's why you're studying, right? That's why you're reviewing. Eventually, you will become better. Okay? Just trust the good things that the Lord planted in your heart, in your life, the, the skills that He gave you. Okay? A lot of you passed rigorous exams to become healthcare professionals. Am I correct? Like, imagine this. Four years in college, five years in college, trying to get through the challenges of getting your bachelor's degree in nursing. That wasn't a piece of cake. That was hard. And then after all that, you had to take the PRC licensure exam. Then not everyone passes that test. But yet here you are. You're already working in the medical world. You're working in the medical field. That's a testament to your greatness. So never say bad things about yourself. You are limited. You're not perfect. But you can do this. You got this. Just be patient with yourself. Stop saying bad things about yourself, okay? You are the cream of the crop, okay? Can you type that in chat? For people who are in this Zoom meeting right now, say cream of the crop, okay? Show me that we're on the same page. You have to believe it. You have to say it over and over again to program your mind for success. Cream of the crop, okay? Yes, thank you, IDC. Thank you, Anne. Yes, you are the cream of the crop. Thank you, Jazz. Yeah, that's true. You are the cream of the crop. Very good. Yeah, keep going. And hopefully, with, I, with, with, with what I will teach you, you're the cream of the crop, and that niner, we will make you creamier. <laughs> okay? Remember that. You're the cream of the crop, and that niner, we make you creamier. <laughs> okay.
Okay? Keep that in mind. <laughs> I understand. I understand. You know, when you take the reading exam and you're dealing with true, false, not given, yes, no, not given, you know, every part of your body is sweating, you know? You can feel it in your fingers. You can feel it in your toes. You can feel it in your nose. All right? I feel it in my finger. I feel it in my toe. Love is all around me. And so the feeling grows. See, love is all around you. Because February 14 is fast approaching. <laughs> And you also have to love yourself. Okay, love yourself. Okay, you got this. Believe in yourself. In a world full of haters, the last thing that you need is to hate yourself. Okay, you already have a lot of haters. All right, don't, don't add yourself to that list. Okay, so true false not given, also known as identifying information, is a type of question that is designed to check if you can fact check. Wow, puro check. Fact check. What does that mean, sir? Fact na fact. Hindi. <laughs> Check means you're being tested if you can look for evidence. Because basically, the way it works is, and you're familiar with this, especially if you said that you, you hate true false not given or identifying information, the way it works is you will be given a statement. And you have to verify whether that statement is true according to the passage, is it false according to the passage, or was that statement not even mentioned in the passage. And what people tend to forget, this is what makes the test difficult, you're supposed to look for evidence. The problem, and I used to be guilty about this. All right, guys, so story about me when I was a student of Niner. Yes, I was a student of 9.09er. I was once a student of Mr. Irvin Temporal and Mr. Brian Shawson and Mr. Jeff Corito and Fritz Nolasco and Philip Aitona. Like all of those guys that you see regularly on IFNG, they used to be my mentors. So I was a student of Niner back in 2015. All right, 2015 and I was so cocky back then. <laughs> I thought I was better than all of them. <laughs> it was a wake-up call. <laughs> I was looking at Brian. I was looking like, at so I'm like, I'm scaling ako dyan. <laughs> Until I underwent one-on-one -on -one coaching. Guys, here's the thing. Here's how humbling the experience is. Okay, I was the sports editor of our, our newspaper in school. So I was the sports editor of The Lance, the official student publication of Letran. Um... Before I attended Niner, I was a contributor to PC Shopper Magazine. I was also able to get one of my articles published in the week. So that's a US magazine. So I got, so you see my arrogance like, hey, what have these guys done with their life? I'm a sports editor. I am best thesis in college. You know, I have my work regularly published in a magazine. I got published in the US. <laughs> I undergo writing sessions with Sir Brian and the other coaches. It was a humbling experience. So what does that tell you? Being good at English is not good enough to help you get a good score in the IELTS exam. Because if that's the case, Filipinos don't need to prepare for the test. Filipinos are naturally good at English, right? We're one of the best English users in Asia. But why do we struggle with the IELTS? Because the IELTS is more than just a test of your ability to speak and write in English. The IELTS is looking for specific things. And if you cannot present them with those specific things, then that can be used against you. Now, what does that have to do with reading? So I took a mock exam. I think Sir Jeff was the one who was uh, conducting that mock exam. I took the mock exam. Now, I was so confident. <laughs> reading? Child's play. <laughs> I took a mock exam at Niner. Okay. <laughs> can, you guess, can you guess my score in our mock exam back in 2015? <laughs> If you can guess it, you have a prize. Your prize is a plus. <laughs> can you guess my score? When I took a mock exam in 2015 with our lecturers at Niner. Come on. Don't be shy. I won't be, I won't be angry with you if you write down a low score. Okay? <laughs> Just thank you. Huh? You really think highly of me. Huh? <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> Abigail is the closest so far. Closest but not yet that figure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got a five. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, why? Just like you, I struggled with identifying information. The problem is I was bringing my personal knowledge and experiences 
to the test. So whether you're dealing with true, false, not given, whether you're dealing with matching paragraph headings, whether you're dealing with you know, identifying information, whether you're dealing with sentence completion or short answer questions, always look for evidence. This is not an exam about your personal knowledge and your IQ. It's an exam about you being able to find information. Find information. Find. It's not about what you know. Find. Look for it in the passage. Even if the passage doesn't make sense, it's your source of answer. If the passage says dogs can breed fire, even if your heart tells you, hey, dogs cannot breed fire, what can you do? That's what the passage says. So go for it. Okay? Always look for evidence. Do not bring your personal knowledge to the test. That's actually one of the reasons why people struggle with identifying information, also known as true, false, not given. People struggle because they bring their personal knowledge to the test. Don't do that. At the end of the day, the only source of your answer is the passage. Imagine that, mark exam at 9 or 5 in the actual exam 9. Oh, hard work pays off. Mm. Right? I, I'm not sharing that piece of information with you so that you will think that Oh, the IELTS is easy. I, I won't prepare anymore. This guy used to get a five now and, and eventually he got a nine. No. What I'm trying to tell you is your situation is not permanent. Your situation is not permanent. Your skill level is not permanent. What you're feeling right now is permanent. If you're in a bad place right now, if there's something troubling your heart, if there's something that makes you feel like you cannot do this, I want to remind you, your situation is not permanent. It can change. It can get better. That's something I learned as a Christian. Nothing bad is permanent. The only thing permanent is the power of God. You will get better. Align your activities to His goals, to His plans for you. You do your best. Let Him take care of the rest. And don't ever, ever say bad things about yourself. You got this, all right? So avoid using personal knowledge. What else? Um, when it comes to the IELTS reading exam, one thing I also learned, apart from avoiding the use of personal knowledge, again, be faithful to the source material, the passage. You also have to improve your reading speed. Reading speed. How do you improve your reading speed? Well, you have to read more. There's no way around it. You have to read more. But the common mistake of people, when they're taking the IELTS reading exam, they're trying to understand every single word. Who's guilty of that? I will understand every single word. So when you're reading, you're reading slowly. Designed to test your ability to fact check. Designed to test your ability. Guys, don't do that. Don't do that. It's all about looking for information. You're not meant, you're not expected to understand every single word. Look for information. Later, I'll show you how to look for information. But just keep that in mind. Okay, keep that in mind. It's called a reading exam, but you don't have to read every single word. You're not supposed to understand it. Just get the general idea of it. You don't have to memorize it. You don't have to dissect ability. What does ability mean? You know, don't do that. Just get the gist of things, how the words are connected. That's it. You don't have to like analyze every single word. Okay. So how is true, false, not given different from yes, no, not given? Yes, no, not given is testing your ability if you can comprehend and distinguish the opinions or views of the writer. So those are the key differences between the two. True, false, not given is all about fact-checking. Yes, no, not given. Uh, not given. You're trying to comprehend or distinguish the opinions or views of the writer. How does that affect your strategy? True, false, not given is very straightforward. Okay. Is it said in the passage? Is it? Okay, true. Is it not said? Not given. Is it said but they're contradicting one another? False. But yes, no, not given sometimes requires inference. What does inference mean? Inference means you have to draw conclusions based on the evidence presented in the passage. You don't have to do this all the time, but sometimes you have to when it comes to yes, no, not given. So that's the difference between the two. True, false, not given is very straightforward. Okay, This is the statement. This is the passage. Compare. Okay, now come to a decision. Yes, no, not given is not so straightforward. Sometimes the answer is not explicitly stated. You have to come to a conclusion. And later, I'm going to talk about that. Like, when does this happen? When, when does this inference have to take place? Okay? So other things to remember, when it comes to almost any question in the reading test, answers and questions typically appear in the same order. Yeah. So if true false not given is questions 1 to 10, boom, very easy. Why? 
answers and questions appear in the same order. So that means question number one, the answer to question number one can be found in the first paragraph. Answers and questions appear in the same order. Question number two, the answer could be in the second paragraph. Question number three, the answer could be in the third paragraph. Now take note, I'm using the word could be. Because sometimes question one, the answer is, the, is in the first paragraph. Question two, the answer could also be in the first paragraph, could be in the second paragraph. So just be mindful of that. But bottom line, questions and answers appear in the same order for the most part. This is especially true for the first questions. Questions 1 to 10, questions 10 to 20. Yeah, that could happen. But don't expect that to happen in the final passage. In the final passage, the order of the answers and the order of the questions may be a little bit different. How does that affect your strategy? If the questions and the answers appear in the same order, meaning to say, true false not given is questions one to six. So that means it's paragraph one to six, focus on that. If that's your situation, if that's the scenario you're dealing with, you may want to use scanning. Scan the question first and then compare it to the passage. But if true false not given, is in the last passage, meaning to say the last set of questions, instead of scanning, maybe use skimming. Skim the passage first before you go to the questions. Because again, if your true-false not given question is in the last passage, there's a chance that the answers and the questions do not appear, appear in the same order anymore. Uh, am I making sense, guys? Am I talking too fast? Like, uh, are we keeping up? Are we good? Please let me know if you don't understand it. I, I'll be more than happy to repeat it. Are we good, guys? Because, you know, uh, typically I get <laughs> I get some feedback with my students at Niner. But here, you know, I, I'm trying to like, you know, get a feel of things. Are we good? Okay, Miss Gladys is responding. What about the rest of you guys? We good? Are we, are, we, are we able to understand that? Answers appear in the same order if they're the first set of questions. But if they're not, typically they don't appear in the same order. I hope I'm making sense, all right? Uh, another thing that you have to keep mind of, uh, there is an even distribution of answers. What does that mean? Even distribution. If you have true false not given, it will always use the three choices. There will be a question that you have to answer with true. There will be a question that you will have to answer with false. There will be a question where you have to use not given. You will never, ever answer all the questions with just true, not just with false, not just with not given. You will never just use two options. You will use all three of them. So what does that tell you? You're answering questions one to six. And so far, you have been writing only true. You're probably getting some of the questions right. Not probably. You're certainly getting the questions wrong. I'm sorry, some questions wrong. Because you cannot exclusively use true. Some of the questions, you have to use false or not given. You're answering questions one to six. Your answers so far are just true or false. Oh, there are wrong answers there. You have to use not given eventually. So there is an even distribution of answers. You have to use all the choices eventually. Um, read the statements and then identify important words in the statement. So typically important words take the form of nouns, pronouns, action words, adjectives, and adverbs. Now, when you're looking for important words, also be mindful of the passage. Okay, mindful of the passage. Like, is this something in the passage? You know? Identify that. And then once you've identified all the important ideas in the statements, scan the passage so that you can compare the statement with the passage so that you can verify whether it's true, false, not given. Answers are normally found in one sentence. And when you're dealing with your statements, I mentioned highlight adverbs. Be careful with adverbs or modifiers. They sometimes change the meaning of a statement. If your statement contains an adverb and the adverb is not in the passage, most likely the answer is not given. Oh, you see? Be careful of adverbs. Be careful of extreme language. Totally, completely, extremely, never, forever, always, eternally. Be careful of those words. Those are extreme language. Those adverbs, if you see them in the statement but you don't see them in the passage, most likely the answer to the question is not given. So to summarize, uh, again, answers and questions appear in the same order, even distribution of answers, statement first before the question. If true, false, not given, 
are the first set of questions. If it's in the last passage, skim first before you read the statement. Answers are normally found in one sentence and then watch out for extreme language. Uh, I think something that I also want to add here, when do you answer true? When do you answer false? When, when do you answer not given? And a lot of people are typically confused between false and not given. Who agrees with me? The difference between false and not given is confusing. Who agrees with me? Can you give me a me in chat? Do you agree with that? The difference between, between false and not given is sometimes confusing. Yeah. Thank you very much, IDC. Thank you, RR. Yeah. So here's the thing. Let's simplify this. You pick true. You pick true if the statement is found in the passage. That's it. It's exactly in the passage. Now, bear in mind, the words in the statement may not be the same words in the passage. So your ability to recognize synonyms and paraphrased information will come into play. Okay? So keep that in mind. The words in the statement may not be the same words in the passage, but if the statement and the passage are expressing the same ideas, it's true. It's true. If the statement is a paraphrased version of the sentence in the passage, it's true. When do you answer false? It's wrong. You can prove it's wrong. You can prove it's wrong. For example, let me type it in on our whiteboard. Okay. How can you prove it's wrong? Okay, let's say this is an excerpt from your passage. This is your statement. Okay, excerpt from the passage. Marlon's dog is brown and it loves to chase cats. The statement, Marlon's black dog loves to go after felines. This is false because you can prove that it's wrong. That's the most important thing, evidence. Why is it wrong? Sir, felines and cats, that's a paraphrased version of that. Chase, go after the same thing. Love, love. Same thing. Dog, dog, same thing. But the difference is the color. You can prove that this is wrong. When you pick false, you need evidence that it's wrong. Evidence. You're not guessing the evidence. You're not saying probably. You're not assuming anything. Huwag kang asyomera. Asyomera ka ba? You need concrete evidence. It has to be a hard false. What do I mean by hard false? Solid false. There's evidence. There's evidence. Hindi tamang hinala. <laughs> THK. <laughs> Who's TH here? <laughs> are you tamang hinala? <laughs> are you guilty of that? Because if you are, maybe that's why you're struggling with that. <laughs> I else reading this. <laughs> Don't be TH. Look for evidence. Ay, di si tumatawa pero deep inside hurt. It's okay, IDC. It's okay. You're loved here. Yeah, so again, if you're going to pick false, remember that you need evidence. Okay? Okay? Huwag na kasi kayo TH. Because guys, when you're TH, all you're doing is you're killing yourself softly. Fingers, singing my life with his words. Killing me softly with his song. Killing me softly with his song. Telling my whole life with his song. Yeah, all you're doing is killing yourself softly if you're tamang. Pinala. Look for concrete proof, okay? Don't rely on your instincts alone. Sir, women's intuition. Ah, totoo din yan. Women's intuition is very powerful. <laughs> That's like a superpower. <laughs> Most of the time, it's correct. Based on experience, not that I'm a woman, but I know women who have very powerful intuition. Anyway, going back. So, Uy, umagri si Jane. <laughs> who got? Okay, so let's try to apply what we've learned. Let's apply what we've learned. Okay, oh, it's question number one. Question number one, what, what have we learned? Oh, questions appear in the same order as the 
answers. Very good. Now, read your question. Look for important words. The study of how living things have evolved over time, of how living things have evolved over time, is known as chronobiology. Important words, okay? Study, living things have evolved over time, is chronobiology. Wait, let me erase that one. Is chronobiology, okay? All right. So these are our keywords. Now, next step. You're done scanning your you're done scanning your question. What do we do next? We scan the passage. Only look for important information relative to your relative to your statement. Okay, so study chronobiology how things have evolved over time. Okay, let's look for that. Chronobiology, okay, important information. Might sound futuristic. <laughs> There's no mention of futuristic in the statement. Ignore that. Oh. Like something out of a science. Oh, oh, oh. You see, this is the problem with Rufus not given. There's just TMI. Too much info. Useless. Erase that. Erase that. Erase that. Okay. Erase, 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 erase. Like your ex. Erase in your head. Oh, study. <laughs> that focuses on. No, we don't need all these processes. We don't need that. Useless information. Useless. Useless. Okay. Chronobiology study that focuses on short-term rhythms of time and their impact on flora and fauna. Oh. Diba? Now you know the definition of chronobiology based on the passage. This is the definition of chronobiology in your passage. The only source of your answer. Now, compare, compare the passage to your statement. Ladies and gentlemen, is it true? Is the statement supporting the passage? Is it false? Are they contradicting one another? Is it not given? What do you think is the answer? Type it in chat. Come on. Come on, you answer. Kasi you're not learning if I'm going to answer it for you. According to RR, false. Hmm. This is like pero obayong. You want to copy RR? According to Rodilin, not given. Kala ko Rodilin, ibig sabihin, NG, napakagwapo eh. But okay, I understand. <laughs> Hey, what about the rest of you? There are 38 people in the meeting. Come on, guys. You don't want to answer? <laughs> I give you guys 30 seconds. <laughs> Ibigyan ko kayo ng jacket, Joe. Jacket sa ngipin. <laughs> According to Abigail, Abigail or Abigail, it's false. All right? Anyone else? Don't be afraid, guys. This is what I'm going to tell you. Maybe some of you are afraid to write their answers because, sir, I'm embarrassed to be wrong. Better to be wrong now than to be wrong in the actual exam. Do you agree? That's the purpose of learning. People who are afraid to make mistakes are people who will prevent themselves from learning. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's part of the process. We're all learning here. You're not alone. It's okay to make mistakes. No one's going to make fun of you. No one will condemn you. Okay. To the people, to the people who answered false, congratulations, you got it right. Sir, why is false the correct answer? Okay, so now we're going to rationalize. And ladies and gentlemen, this is something that I want you to do on your own. When you are taking a practice test on your own, learn to rationalize. Okay? Repeat after me. You don't even have to type it in chat. Say it. Say it. Even though I cannot hear you, even if you're, mute, you're, you're muted on Zoom, say it. Rationalize. Why? Some people, when they take practice tests, they stop. They stop after they find out if they're right or wrong. That is not the most optimal way to learn. You don't stop just by figuring out if you're right or wrong. Figure out why you got it right. Figure out why you got it wrong. Because when you rationalize, it helps you better understand what are correct answers and wrong answers in the IELTS exam. Rationalize. Rationalize. And that's what we're going to do right now. Rationalize. Why is this false and not given? Why? Okay. According to the statement, the definition of chronobiology is it's the study of how living things have evolved over time. That's the definition. The definition of chronobiology, according to the passage, is it's the study of short-term rhythms of time and their impact on flora and fauna. My question, to those who answered not given my question, if this is the correct, if this is the correct definition of chron chronobiology, is the statement right or wrong? Is it right or wrong? If this is the correct definition, okay, 
this is the passage. The passage is always right. For people who answered not given, if the, if the passage is always right, and this is the definition of chronobiology, my question to you, is the statement right or wrong? What do you think? Is it right or wrong? It's wrong. And you have evidence, right? Think about this. So this is my analogy here. This is my analogy, okay? Analogy, okay? Statement number one. Marlon's shirt is black. Okay, that's statement number one. Okay, let's, let's pretend. Let's pretend that that's statement number one. Marlon's shirt is black, okay? Passage. Marlon's shirt is brown. Actually, it's maroon. <laughs> My bad. Let's make it black first. I can't see it. Marlon's shirt is maroon. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, based on these two short sentences, okay, Marlon's shirt is black, Marlon's shirt is maroon, we can prove that the statement is wrong because it goes against what the passage is telling you. According to the passage, what I'm wearing is maroon. The statement says I'm wearing black. You have evidence it's wrong. That's why the answer is false. In the same regard, statement number one is false. It's giving you a different meaning of chronobiology when in fact the meaning of chronobiology is mentioned in the passage. That's why you cannot say not given. You have evidence to support that this is wrong. It contradicts one another. Am I making sense? People who answered not given? I hope I am. People who answered not given, are, are we good? Did we understand why it's false? So again, when we pick not given, there's no evidence. We have evidence here. The definition of chronobiology is in the passage, but your statement is giving a wrong definition. It's a different definition. Therefore, it's false. Okay, I hope that's making sense. All right. If not, you know, let's keep going. Perhaps you will be able to get it with more examples. Okay. Let's look at this second example. The behavior of sea creatures is affected by the rise and fall of sea levels. All right. Okay. Important words behavior, sea creatures affected by the rise and fall of sea levels. Um, to answer your question, just again, false means you have evidence that it's wrong. Not given, you cannot prove whether it's right or wrong. Does that make sense? Excuse me. So statement number one is false because statement number one is giving us a different definition of chronobiology. But the passage is showing us the actual, the actual definition of chronobiology. Therefore, you can compare. All right. So, oh, bilis mo yung sumasagot kagad, no? Okay. So, for those who were able to answer quickly, happy for you. But what have we learned so far? Eliminate irrelevant information. Chronobiology can take many forms. Useless. We don't need that anymore. Marine life, for example, is influenced by the tidal path by tidal patterns. Do we need to read the other parts of the paragraph? Possibly not anymore. Remember, most of the time, according to the guidelines, most of the time, the answer is found in one sentence. Most of the time. We see all the important words here. Marine life is a paraphrased version of sea creatures. Influence is a paraphrased version of affected. Rise and fall of sea levels, that's the tidal patterns. So everything else, we don't need that anymore. Oh, burahin na yan. Oh, yan. Useless, useless. We just focus on this group of words. Marine life, for example, is influenced by tidal patterns. Just focus on that. Just focus on that. Marine life, for example, is influenced by tidal patterns. True, false, not given. Oh, gagaling. Ang daming nakatrue. Oh, ayan. Very good. Right? It's true. Galing. I'm proud of you guys. Good job. Good job. True. Very good. Okay, true. All right? Because basically, the statement is just a paraphrased version of the task description, guys. Very good. Very good. I'm so impressed. All right? Wasn't that easy? But if I'm being honest, guys, most of the time, people find answering true easy. It's always the confusion 
it's just that the confusion comes from the difference between false and not given. All right? Yeah, true is easy. But hey, if you get true right, at least you get some points. One and two is better than zero. Right? Getting a few correct answers is much better than not getting any correct answer at all. You'll be surprised. There are a lot of people that cannot even get one single correct answer with this type of question. Okay? So, so you know, just be optimistic. Okay? Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. All right? Okay. Let's try this third question. Notice it's the same paragraph from before, but we have a different statement. During daytime, most animals are active. Okay. Chronobiology can take many forms. Oh, ignore that. Marine life, for example, is influenced by tidal patterns. No. Why am I ignoring these words? Because if you look at your statement, what are the most important words here? Daytime, most animals active. Those are the important words. And so far, the first two sentences, they don't contain those words. But the next one, okay, this is challenging. Animals tend to be active. Uy, keywords, animals, active. Animals tend to be active. We don't need an active anymore. We're just looking for active depending on the position of the sun or moon. Hmm. There's no mention of sun or moon. Hmm. Suspicious. Numerous creatures. Creatures. Wait, wait. Numerous creatures, sir. Most animals. Sir, most animals. Humans included are largely journal. That is, they like to come out during the hours of sunlight. Oh. Interesting. Nocturnal animals, we don't care about them. Because we're looking for daytime. Nocturnal means you're you know, operating at night. So everything else becomes irrelevant. So we have two sentences here that somewhat tell us words from the statement. Now, based on these words, what do you think is the answer? True, false, not given. What do you think? True, false, not given. Hmm. Mm. I'll give you 30 seconds to think about it. Huh? Mm. Mm. What do you think? Huh? In the words of Ami Perez, SF, SF. <laughs> In the words of Ami Perez, SF, SF. Mm. You need to have evidence to say it's true or false. Not given, you don't have evidence. Ayun. Excuse me. Hey, time is up. You want to know the answer? Oh, si Jason, nagtaas ng kamay. Oh. <laughs> High five! <laughs> you don't need to raise your hand. Just type your answer. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Sir! <laughs> Why is it not given? Anyari! <laughs> Who's surprised that it's not given? Are you surprised? Sir, rationalize. Come on. Rationalize. Rationalize. Come on. Why do you think it's not given? Let's concentrate on this, this group first. Okay, let's erase everything. Let's. Oh. It's not true. The answer is already on the board, not given. What are you saying? <laughs> Alma. Okay. Let's look at this first group of words. Okay. Animals tend to be active or inactive depending on the position of the sun or moon. It doesn't answer the statement. But the word active is there. Right? So basically, this sentence does not give us any evidence whether this is right or wrong. Now we move to the next sentence. Numerous creatures, humans included, are largely journal. That is, they like to come out during the hours of sunlight. Sir, a lot of creatures, numerous creatures, like to come out during the hours of sunlight. Sir, a lot of creatures are, a lot of creatures are active during the hours of sunlight. Sir, a lot of creatures are active. So that means it's true. Okay, question. Ayun, nadali ni IDC. That's the explanation. What did I tell you earlier? Be careful of modifiers. Most is not the same. It's not the same as not, uh, sorry, most and a lot, they're not the same thing. Okay? Most and a lot are not the same thing. Most and numerous are not the same thing. Numerous, 
100, 200, 300, 400, 1 million. Okay, numerous. But the problem is when you use the word most, it's very specific. Most is 90 to 99% of a population. Class, looking at your paragraph, where does it say 99% of the population? Where does it say 90% of the population? Where's your evidence? Tell me. Where? We only have the word numerous. 50% of the population is numerous. You have 100 classmates, 50%. That's numerous, but that's not most. That's numerous. Hmm. Okay, question. Come on, answer me. Where is your evidence of the 90% or 99%? Is there evidence? None. That's why it's not given. Oh, be careful. We discussed that earlier. Be careful of adverbs. Most and numerous are not the same thing. Most is more specific. Numerous is vague. It's broad. Most is very specific. Am I making sense, guys? Does that make sense? If you don't like my explanation, look at IDC's explanation. <laughs> it's not the same. Most and numerous are not the same. Numerous is vague. It's broad. Most is very specific. Ah? Huh? Oh, may bago tayong natutunan, no? <laughs> Sir Marlon, thank you. I don't know what to do without you. I did not know that those two things have a major difference. Yeah, they do. It's quite understandable. Yeah. What would you do without me? The music is not part of the presentation, IDC. It's for me to mix, you know, to just have fun. I'm doing it spontaneously, okay? I just have past hands. Past hands that were damaged by gaming. <laughs> hey, Gladys, that's 1975. That's a new band. What are you saying? <laughs> that's, that's a Gen Z band, okay? I'm not, I'm not old, I'm young. When I was born, the popular band is BTS. What are you talking about, Gladys? <laughs> when people talk about cartoons what I know is Boruto you know I don't know Naruto I'm young <laughs> yeah 3 years old 30 years ago <laughs> it is the different yeah exactly Jazz yes that's that's the point hey Jazz don't be afraid to like um, send your message to everyone um, because you're directly messaging me I think you're imparting some useful stuff that everyone in the meeting can can also relate to. All right. So I'm glad that we cleared things up there. Okay. Let's raise that. Baka naaalala nyo lang yung songs, hindi yung lecture, ha? <laughs> my boss will have my head. <laughs> Make sure that you're remembering the lecture, not the songs. <laughs> I don't want to go back to our center and get reprimanded. <laughs> I love my boss. I don't want to disappoint him. Okay. <laughs> Next. Statement number four, circadian rhythms describe how we behave on different days. Okay, important words. Okay, circadian rhythms, how we behave different days. Everything else irrelevant. Now, let's read the passage. Colonel biologists are interested in what is known as the circadian rhythm. Okay, that's important. We see the keyword. We see the keyword, circadian rhythm. Now, guys, when you're reading passages, pronouns are really helpful. For example, the word this. It's important for you to keep referencing in mind. What is referencing? What is the word this referring to? What is the antecedent of the word this? This is referring to circadian rhythm. Okay, This is the entire cycle that our bodies are designed to go through in the course of a 24-hour day. Aside from sleeping at night and waking up during the day, each cycle, okay, so that's not any more important anymore. It's describing the cycle. It's not anymore describing circadian rhythm, okay? We're looking for the definition of circadian rhythm. So let's erase that. You can find the definition of circadian rhythm from here to here, okay? So that's the definition of circadian rhythm, okay? Here, start here, and here, okay? Guys, 
compare the definition of circadian rhythm in the passage to the statement. True, false, not given. Compare. Do we have evidence? If we have evidence, is it true? Is it false? Is it not given? Don't we have evidence? Are you sure? Again, you're reading a definition of circadian rhythm in the statement. Does your passage give a definition of circadian rhythm? If it's giving a definition of circadian rhythm, does it match the passage? Oh, okay. So the answer here is, to everyone who answered false, congratulations. Now, for the few people who answered not given, okay, you have two definitions. This one from the statement, this one from the passage. Of course, we have already established that the passage will always be correct. The passage is the source of your answer. Your passage is giving a different definition of circadian rhythm. According to your passage, circadian rhythm, this is the entire cycle that our bodies are designed to go through uh, in the course of a 24-hour day. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. That's the definition of circadian rhythm. Cycle. But here it says how we behave. Behavior. Behavior cycle. Are they the same thing? No. They're contradicting one another. Therefore, the answer is false. So to the people who answered not given, is it clear? Is it clear? I hope it is. For people who got the answer right, I'm happy for you. That means you're improving. Oh, see? Improvement doesn't happen overnight. But what matters is you're doing it little by little. Okay? So I hope to those who answered not given, it's clear why we said false. Remember, rationalize, rationalize, rationalize. Okay? Let's continue. Okay. Now, maybe you're wondering, sir, we're doing this too slowly. We don't have a lot of time in the actual reading test. I am slowing down the process for you. But once you do this over and over again, you will become faster. The faster that you become, then that means you will be able to answer the question without compromising the entire test. So it means we need to practice a lot. It goes back to what I'm saying. Improve your reading speed, practice a lot. Whatever you learn from me today, apply it over and over again until you become faster. It's like when you were starting as a healthcare professional. The first time you were asked to stick a syringe in a human being, you're probably a little bit nervous, right? Oh, diba? Sinasaksak mo injection dun sa patient mo. Your CI is probably making fun of you. Hello, hello. So you're scared, right? You're good. I don't want to hurt the patient. But look at you now. Oh, you're using a syringe in a matter of seconds. You're not even like focusing on, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three. No, you're not doing that anymore because you've been doing it over and over again. It's the same thing with reading. It's the same thing with the reading section of the IELTS. This is a skill, and the only way to master a skill is through repetition, 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 repetition. All right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Statement number five. Even if you are a night person, you can maintain a healthy circadian rhythm. <clears throat> Excuse me. My Milo is uh, getting in my throat now. Okay. Important words. Ignore this. Night person can maintain healthy circadian rhythm. Okay, let's look at our let's look at our passage. Chronobiologists are interested in what is known. Okay, ignore ignore that. This is the 20, this is the entire cycle, ignore that. Aside from sleeping at night. Oh, night. And waking up during the day, each cycle includes a variety of factors. Uh, it's not talking about the person. Okay, ignore that. Okay, last sentence. Oh, night people. Person people. Uy, same. Okay, let's start here. Night people, for example, frequently describe how they struggle to function in the morning but become alert and focused by evening. A chronotype is a benign variation. With, okay, we don't need that. Don't need that. Okay, let's focus here. Okay, guys, statement versus passage. True, false, not given. What do you think? True, false, not given. Are, are you answer so fast? Ang ibig sabihin ba ng are, are ready ready? <laughs> o sabi ni Joshua true daw. Ang meaning ng are are ready ready. <laughs> Is that what are are means? Ready ready. <laughs> okay, we have a few people giving their answers. Thank you so much for your answers. Are are Jazz, Abigail, Abigail, Joshua, anyone else who would like to Throw their hat in the ring. 
sila lang. What about the rest? I'm scared, sir. I'm scared. Don't be afraid. You're here to figure out what you're doing wrong. So that means taking chances. You won't learn if you're just like listening to other people participate. Observing helps you learn, but it's not the most optimal way to do it. Experience is the best teacher. Find out if you're wrong or right. Tell me your answer. Ready or not, here I come. I'm gonna find you. <laughs> And make you want me. <laughs> Anyone else? Wala na? Okay. So the answer is actually, yes, the people who said true, you're correct. Okay, you're correct. Very good. Good job. For people who answered true, you're correct. Okay, why? Night people, night person. The night people struggle to function in the morning. But they become alert and focused by evening. So that means at night, they have a healthy circadian rhythm. They're used to it. Okay? So what is circadian, circadian rhythm again? The cycle that your body is designed to go through. Oh, you're designed to go through that in the evening. So that's why their circadian rhythm, night people, it's healthy. Okay? I hope that makes sense. All right? For those who answered true, good job. For those who did not answer again, I hope that you would. Number six. Number six. New therapies, through new therapies, circadian rhythms can be permanently altered without causing harm. Okay, New therapies okay, can permanently alter circadian rhythms without causing harm. Okay, So these are your important words. Okay, Let's look at our passage. Scientists have limited abilities to create long-term changes. Okay, We don't need that. It doesn't contain any important info. Recent ther therapeutic advances. Oh, therapy, therapeutic. Oh, this could be a good source of your answer. Recent therapeutic advances for humans, such as artificial light, machines, and melatonin administration, can reset, reset, alter, can reset our circadian rhythms, but our bodies can tell the difference, and our health suffers when we disrupt these natural rhythms for extended periods of time. Extended, permanently. Okay. Based on that group of words, everything else is irrelevant. You already found the source of your answer. What's the answer? Oh, baby, yes. Okay. All right. Oh, galing, oh. Talaga naman, oh. Ang bibilis, oh. Very good, Joshua. Oh, Jane, IDC, Jazz, RR. RR, talaga, ready, ready. Okay, what is the answer? What do you think? Read it again. New therapies can alter your circadian rhythm without causing harm. Without causing harm. Oh. Recent therapeutic advances for humans. Okay, remove that. Unnecessary info. Can reset our circadian rhythms. Remove that. And our health suffers. Hmm. What do you think is the answer? <laughs> Eliminate unnecessary information. Oh, I eliminated the unnecessary for you. Oh, new therapies can alter your circadian rhythm without, without causing harm. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. New therapies won't hurt you. You can use them to change your circadian rhythm. It won't hurt you. Look at your passage. Recent therapeutic advances, recent new therapies can reset your circadian rhythm, but your health suffers. Suffers versus without causing harm. What does without causing harm mean? If it's not causing harm, it's not bad for you. Hmm. What do you think? The answer is tan -tan false. False. Okay, very good. May mga nagpalit ng sagot. <laughs> very good. For those who answered false, good job. Okay? Right? Because you can prove it's wrong. According to number six, well, it doesn't cause harm. It's not bad for me. Hindi, sabi, health suffers. Oh, it's false. You're contradicting one another. Wow, good job. Okay. It cannot be not given. You have evidence here. So that's why it's important to recognize paraphrasing. Recent, it's new. Therapies, therapeutic advances. Oh, di ba? Oh, reset your circadian rhythm, altering. Reset, altering, it's changing. When you're looking for synonyms and paraphrasing, don't look for exact synonyms. Okay? You can also find group of words that can express the same idea. 
hindi pwedeng ano, you're not you're not always looking for one word and you're looking for one synonym. No, it's not always like that. It can sometimes be a phrase. You did not see health suffers. O, oh, ganun talaga eh. Love hurts eh. <laughs> no connect. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving forward. Okay, next one. Next one. Um, vegetables grown naturally have a higher nutritional value. Okay, vegetables grown naturally higher nutritional value. Okay. Scientists have limited, okay, not important. It doesn't contain. Reason therapeutic, not important. Let's skip here. Everything else doesn't contain anything about vegetables. We read this passage earlier. Plants appear, okay, plant. Vegetable is a plant. Plants appear to be no more malleable in this regard. We don't care. We're just actually, we want to find out if it has a lot of nutritional value. Remove everything. Oh. Studies show that vegetables grown in season and ripened on the tree contain far more essential nutrients than those grown in greenhouses and ripened by laser. True, false, not given. Hmm. Vegetables grown naturally have a higher nutritional value. Vegetables grown in season and ripened on the tree contain far more essential nutrients. If it's grown in season and ripened on the tree, that means it's grown naturally. But if it's grown in greenhouses and ripened by laser, that's not grown naturally. That's artificial. That's, that's something that you forced. That's not natural. So this is irrelevant. Focus on this one. Vegetables grown in season and ripened on the tree contain far more essential nutrients. Oh. True, false, not given. Hey. Chancharan, wow, galing. People who answered true, very good. Oh. See? Ang galing naman pala ng mga students sa IFNG. Mag-exam na kayo. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> okay, now. Oh, sige nga. Oh, sige, testing, testing. You're on your own. You're on your own. Why? As much as I want to, I cannot be there with you during the exam. Am I right? I cannot be there with you. You know, if it's only legal and if the price is right, I will take the test for you. <laughs> But unfortunately, it's illegal. I don't want to go to prison. So I will not take the test for you. So, Okay, you're on your own. You're on your own. Okay, you're on your own. I'm going to give you one minute to answer this. Oh, Go. Kaya mo yan. Naniniwala ako sa'yo. Hmm. Bigyan kita ng tugtog. Sige, yeah, kaya mo yan. Malaki ka na. Oh, galing yung mga sumasagot ha. Oh, ignore that. You still have 30 more seconds. One minute is actually too long, but I, I just want you to like try to appreciate if it's the correct answer or not. Focus on that first. Tutugan ko kayo. <laughs> yung beat biglang pinutol <laughs> okay what do you think is the answer okay some people said not given wala ka yung pagkakaisa <laughs> what are the important words important words ponderosa biggest type of pine okay that's your important word okay normally the answer is in one sentence the answer is not given okay why why is it not given okay ponderosa is here Ponderosa is here. It says, Ponderosa is large. Okay, it's large. But, did the passage say it's the biggest? Is it the largest? No. We were informed that it's large. That's it. We don't know if it's the largest. That's not mentioned. That's why I told you, be careful with the adverbs, the adjectives, the modifiers. Large and biggest, they're not the same. Large and big, 
synonyms. Largest, biggest, synonyms. Large and biggest, not synonyms. Remember that when you are using the superlative form of the adjective, EST, biggest, EST, the comparison, the comparison is more than one. The comparison is more than one. There's no comparison here in the passage. We're simply being told that the ponderosa pine is large. Are we clear? For people who answered false, are we clear? Why the answer is not given? Does that make sense? I hope it does. It's not given. Okay, Large and biggest, not synonyms. The passage is simply telling us that, hey, the ponderosa pine, it's big. But we're not comparing it to anything. So we cannot say it's the biggest. That type of information is not mentioned. We have no evidence to prove that. Are we clear? So parang kanina ang dali. Because <laughs> I'm helping you. You have to do this on your own. <laughs> okay, next question. Most individuals are familiar with pines. Oh, look for keywords. You don't have to read everything. Oh. Ikaw kayo tugtog para ma-inspire. Okay, time is up. All right, let's see. Okay, a lot of people answered true. And you know, I can't blame them because that's the correct answer. Way to go! <laughs> Galing, oh. Uh, may away na ako ng kapitbahay ko. Dilim na dito. <laughs> Sabita na pa naman ako. Patawarin niyo. <laughs> so why is it true? Okay, look at the last sentence. Last sentence. Look at the last sentence. Last sentence. Look at it. It would not be an exaggeration to say that almost everyone, most individuals, there you go. That's your 90%. That's your 99%. It matches. Almost everyone is familiar with pines. Oh, galing. Nadala na. <laughs> Parang pag-ibig, sir, nadala na ako sa most kanina. <laughs> Marunong ka palang madali. Akala ko matigas ulo mo. <laughs> Okay, next question. Come on, go. True, false, not given. Show me. Show me that you learned something. Come on. Show me your answers. Look for keywords. Don't try to analyze every single word. Come on. up. Only one person had the guts to answer at an early time. And that person actually got it right. Congratulations, Albert. Oh, sige, si Albert di lang taginod. Tagakinig din. <laughs> si Albert di lang yung taginod. Tagikinig, tagikisunod pa. Tagisunod pa yan. <laughs> the answer is false. So why false? Why false? Okay. I know you found the sentence with the word birds, didn't you? Let's look at it together. Kaling ni Albert, ang bilis ah. Baka Einstein talaga to, hindi talaga to taginod. <laughs> okay. As the cone opens, the seeds fall out mostly 
to be dispersed by the wind but occasionally by birds. What do you mean by typically? Typically means normally, usually. Now look at the sentence. It says, the seed is mostly dispersed by the wind, not by birds. Sometimes birds, occasionally. Nung nakita ka lang ng Lee, kala mo pareho na eh. O Jet Lee, Bruce Lee, <laughs> Lady Lee. <laughs> Ayun. <laughs> Lee, ano na yan? Naligaw ka. <laughs> ano ba? Ba't ka naligaw? <laughs> Mostly by the wind. Oh, ayan. Sabi nga niya, occasionally by birds eh. Doon lang, talo na eh. Oh. Occasionally and typically are not synonyms. Be careful of your modifiers. Ayun. But again, I don't want you to feel bad by being wrong. You learn from this mistake. Okay, you learn from it. Okay, next. Okay. Now, this is yes, no, not given. So remember, with yes, no, not given, we're going to sometimes infer. You know, we're, we're going to infer. We're going to conclude based on evidence presented to us. Sometimes the answer is not directly stated, all right? But the the core principle, the core technique remains the same, all right? So it is currently possible to access geothermal energy at depths greater than 3 kilometers, okay? Currently possible, access geothermal energy greater depths than 3 kilometers, okay? So we can get geothermal energy at depths greater than 3 kilometers. Okay, let's look at the passage. Temperatures exceeding 300 degrees Celsius go away. We don't need you. You're not part of the statement. Can be found at depths of, okay, go away one. We only need 3 kilometers. At depths of 100 kilometers in certain areas where the earth's surface has been altered over time, we don't need you, bro. Just go away. Such as true, which we also don't need you. We're just looking for geothermal energy. Okay, don't bother us. The students want to get a good score. These specific areas, these specific areas. So remember, referencing. Referencing. So what is the word these referring to? Three kilometers. One to three kilometers in areas, okay? These specific areas have the potential, possible potential, to be ideal for geothermal energy generation. Yes, no, not given. What do you think is the answer? Yes, no, not given. Yes, no, not given. Yes, no, not. Don't treat this as true, false, not given, guys. Okay, this is not true, false, not given. Don't, don't like just think about the facts. Remember, this is the writer's opinion. You're inferring. You're inferring. You're concluding based on evidence. A lot of you are giving me the wrong answer because you're using true, false, not given. This is yes, no, not given. This is yes, no, not given. Use the evidence to conclude. Use the evidence. It's not very straightforward. It's not very straightforward. Is it possible? Is it possible? I'm not asking for the direct answer. Is it possible? Oh. Is it possible? Hmm. Hmm. Is it possible? Is it possible? That's what you are. That's why, darling, the answer is yes. It's yes. The answer is yes. Now, you are aligned to answer no. I, I understand the people who answered no. Okay, don't get me wrong. I understand where you're coming from. Because you're looking at this, greater than 3 km. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. But you're treating this like true, false, not given. You're treating this like true. This is yes, no, not given. Is it possible? Conclude, infer. Right? If you can get, if you can get geothermal energy at 3 kilometers, it's possible to get it deeper than that. Look at what it's telling you. At depths of 1 to 3 kilometers, it's a range. It's a range. It's a range. Yeah, it's tricky. I understand, Gian. It's tricky. That's why I said, don't treat this like true false not given. That mentality where, okay, it's directly stated. You, you have to be more careful. You have to infer. You have to infer. Okay? Don't overthink it. That's another advice I can give you. Don't overthink it. If the keywords are giving it to you, don't fight it. Okay? Remember that. Don't fight it. 
I know it's hard. Don't fight it. Don't overthink. Yan, maraming nadadali sa ganyan. Whether it's in speaking, writing, even in reading, don't overthink. The keywords, is it giving the answer to you? Then go with the flow. The, the advice I got before I took my IELTS exam, um, when it comes to the true-false not given questions, yes, no, not given questions, just don't fight the question. Does that make sense? I know it's tricky right now, but with more examples, I'm confident that you will get the hang of it. Okay, just, just hang in there. Don't be discouraged by not being able to get the right answer immediately. Okay, I believe in you. All right, so don't, don't be discouraged. Okay, don't be discouraged. We're, we're, we're going to get this. You're going to get the hang of this. Okay, but that's my immediate advice, guys. That's my immediate advice. When you come to your IELTS reading test, don't fight the question. It's like the song. Okay, you cannot fight the question, you cannot fight the moonlight. Starlight, starlight. There's a magical feeling so right. Here to steal your heart tonight. You can try to resist, try to hide from my kiss. But you know, but you know that you can't fight the moonlight deep in the dark. Okay, you can't fight the question. Okay? <laughs> It's like you picking a fight with a pro fighter. You're going down. <laughs> okay, next question. The production of geothermal, gener uh, geothermal energy generates a significant amount of byproducts that can be harmful to the environment. All right. Keyword hunting. Production, geothermal energy generates significant amount, byproducts, harmful environment. Everything else is irrelevant. Unlike natural energy, which we don't care about, we're looking for geothermal. Unlike other natural energy sources, such as solar wind power, which are heavily dependent on weather conditions, geothermal, oh, keyword, geothermal can provide, a, we don't care about consistent supply. We're looking for byproduct. Shut up. We don't need you. As a result, geothermal energy is four to five times more efficient than solar energy in terms of Electricity generation. Now, we don't have a direct synonym for byproduct. But we're talking about efficiency here. You're talking about what it produces. So concentrate on this last sentence, guys. Concentrate on this. Concentrate on this. Yes, no, not given. Yes, no, not given. What do you think? Geothermal energy is more efficient than solar energy. Solar energy. Does solar energy create byproducts? Solar energy, does it create byproducts? Ask yourself that. Solar energy, does it create uh, byproducts? If it does, geothermal energy is better than solar energy. Oh, if geothermal energy is more efficient than solar energy, does that mean, does that, mean that it produces more harmful stuff for the environment? Solar energy is what? good for the environment. But geothermal energy is four to five times better than it. Oh, yes, no, not given. This is the difference between true, false, not given and yes, no, not given. You're inferring. You're using evidence to come to a conclusion. You're coming to a conclusion based on evidence. Geothermal energy is four to five times more efficient than solar energy. Geothermal energy is better than solar energy. Check your statement. Geothermal energy generates a significant of byproducts that's harmful to the environment. Oh, what do you think is the answer? No. No, it doesn't. If it's better than solar, how can it produce a lot of things that are bad for the environment? Uh, you're bringing your understanding to the test. What did I tell you? Don't bring your personal knowledge because you're thinking, oh, geothermal, there's smoke. Oh, who's guilty of that? <laughs> Holy ka. Oh, who's guilty of that? You're bringing your understanding to the test. Don't do that. Look at the passage. Maybe you're thinking geothermal, it produces a lot of smoke. No. Where in the passage does it say that? Look at the passage. Who's guilty of that? Come on, be honest. I'm here to help. I'm not here to condemn. Who was guilty of that? You're thinking oh, geothermal produces a lot of smoke. Right? No. Focus on the passage. The passage says, geothermal is better than solar. If it's better than solar, look at your statement. Okay, 
geothermal is better than solar. The statement says, geothermal energy produces a lot of harmful things to the environment. No. If it's better than solar, how can it produce more harmful things? Right? Does it make sense, guys? Does it make sense? Because I think those who people who answered yes or not given, you're probably thinking geothermal produces a lot of smoke. No, don't use your personal knowledge on the exam. Focus on the passage. Are we clear? Are, are we on the same page here? Are we able to establish why it's a no? Who, who's, not, who's not happy with that explanation? Come on. Be honest. I'm here to help. We're not here to condemn people. We're here to assist one another. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Okay, so Abby was guilty of that. No, no worries, Abby. It's part of the learning process. But at least now you know what's wrong, right? Don't, don't. Because I think the first thing that the people who, who used, when they said yes or not given, they pictured geothermal. Oh, it's in a volcano. There's smoke. No, don't do that. Look at the passage. Then compare it with the statements. I hope, I hope it's making sense, all right? Because I feel like people were doing better in true false not given. But then when we turn to yes, no, not given, we're starting to get wrong answers. Okay, don't lose heart. Next, geothermal energy is more expensive to create than hydroelectric energy. Oh. Keyword hunting. Keyword hunting. Keyword hunting. Can you see hydroelectric? Hmm. These are your keywords. Geothermal, expensive, generate hydroelectric. Oh. What do you think? At the World Geothermal Congress 2000, the international geothermal community urged governments to make firm commitments to developing indigenous government geothermal resources for the benefit of their own people and the environment. At this point, the word geothermal is not anymore uh, a keyword because, well, all the paragraphs are about geothermal energy. So it's not an effective keyword anymore. We're looking for hydroelectric now, right? Because all, of, all the paragraphs are talking about geothermal. It's not unique. We look for something unique. Okay, expensive, sir. Expensive, expensive, expensive. However, several factors continue to stymie. Oh, that's not, sir. That's not it. For starters, it has a low energy. Okay, low. Mm -hmm. Not really. Second, the cost remains high. Sir, expensive. Maybe this is it. Second, the cost remains high when compared to today's most common energy production methods. Okay. What do you think is the answer? Some people have already submitted their answers. To those who answered not given, you're correct. Why? We cannot find hydroelectric energy. Oh, that's another thing. If you really cannot find the evidence, don't be afraid to say not given. Hydroelectric energy is one of the keywords and we cannot find it here. Automatically not given. So good job to the people who answered not given. Very good, guys. I'm impressed. What about the rest? So you naantok na kami. I understand. Some of you probably came from the hospital. Don't worry. Thank you for your service to the country and wherever you are. All right, let's try this one. 14. It can take a decade to develop a single geothermal power station. There are risks that must be considered when establishing a new geothermal power production facility. Oh, that's a keyword. 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 Oh, keyword. Oh. The drilling. Eh, hindi naman sinabi sa statement. Hmm which must extend to the ah, useless. Below the surface, no, we don't need you. We don't need you. It's asking about decade. I don't need all of you. Okay. From the planning stage to the start of operations, what is this referring to? The planning and the operation of the new geothermal power production facility. From the planning stage to start of operations, it is not uncommon for a project to last 10 years. Boom. Is that your keyword? Is that it? What do you think? What do you think, guys? Huh? What do you think? Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Boy, dami na sumasagot, huh? <laughs> Daya nyo sumasagot lang kayo when I'm the one. When I'm the one removing the unimportant. We guys, you have to do it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, guys. That's part of learning. You have to do it as well. You cannot rely on me alone. I, I show you how to do it. Do it even if you get mistake. If, if you make mistakes, it's fine. It's part of learning, all right? The answer is yes. Okay, why? 
So for people who answered no, understand that the word 10 years is synonymous to decade. It is not uncommon. So that means it's normal. It's not uncommon. Not uncommon. Which means, in other words, it's common. <laughs> Dilito ka lang eh, no? <laughs> not uncommon means it's common. It's common for a project to last 10 years. 10 years synonymous to a decade. Oh, diba? Very good, guys. Hmm. Okay. Number 15. Okay. The future of geothermal energy depends on the decline of fossil fuel resources. Okay. Let's look at the important words here. We have geothermal. We have future. Geothermal is still an important word, but understand that it's not any more unique. Almost every paragraph has it. So its value as a keyword is not as as high as it used to in the previous questions. Depends, decline, fossil fuel. Those are your keywords. Okay. Clearly, more progress in the development of geothermal energy. Uh, too many geothermal energy here. Again, its value as a keyword is diminished because the passage is about geothermal energy. So it's not anymore a unique word. Let's look for the other words. Oh, we see the word future here. Oh, oh future is here. Let's focus on that. Kaya, no? More research and development in the field as well as government support and a sense of urgency are required to propel geothermal energy into a promising future. There's, word, there's the word future here. This geothermal energy here. Do you see decline in fossil fuel? Ah, natututo na. Galing! <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. A lot of people are getting it right. Wow, very good. Okay, it's not given. Simple as that. We cannot find decline of fossil fuel. Therefore, it's not given. Oh, galing naman ito mga to. Sino ba nagturo? <laughs> Okay, guys, we don't have a lot of time left. Um, so here's what I'll do. Um, maybe I'll just skip to the part where you can see the, the answer key for our questions. All right. So remember at the start of this class, I gave you handouts. Okay, I gave you handouts. All right. You can download it here. You can download the questionnaire here. So it's not exactly an IELTS. Well, it's close to an IELTS questionnaire, but it's not a complete IELTS questionnaire. You don't only get 10 questions in the IELTS. But this handout that I gave you, it focuses solely on the reading section. All right? Focuses on the reading section. And what I need you to do is to get a screenshot of the question. I, I mean the answers. Get a screenshot of the answers. And then, and then you need to rationalize the answers. Does that make sense? That will help you become better, better testators. Rationalizing. All right? Rationalizing. Okay? Because basically, if I give you the answers, you're not going to answer the question anymore on your own. But the point here is now to develop the ability to understand evidences. So just take a screenshot of the answers. Download the handout that I gave you. Uh, again, I, I think I asked someone from the IFNG team to share it also on Facebook if you want, yeah? And then just compare the answers with the questions. Rationalize. All right? So I hope you find these materials useful. All right. So other things that you can do to improve your skills as an IELTS test taker, definitely it helps to take a lot of practice tests. We talked about the value of improving your endurance, of trying to overcome the physical challenges of the test. And you can only achieve that if you are taking a very realistic simulation of the exam. So a lot of people, what they do, on Monday, I will focus on listening. Tuesday, reading. Wednesday, writing. That can work. That can work. Don't get me wrong. You're still developing skills. But the problem with that is you are not preparing for the test realistically. Whenever you have time, take a listening, reading, and writing test in succession. Okay? And the second bullet point, that's what I want you to do. Develop the ability to rationalize, you know? Don't simply answer questions. Don't simply figure out why you got it wrong and why you got it right. Focus on 
figuring out the reasons behind them. When you pick answers, always look for evidence. That will help you determine if the answer is true or false or yes or no. If you cannot find evidence, then that means the answer is not given. And then like I said, improve your reading speed by reading more. If you need further assistance at Niner, we are more than happy to help you. We have a lot of packages. We even have a free review program. All you have to do is visit our Facebook page and we, you will learn about these packages, okay? You can study with us for free. You can study with us for as low as 2,500 pesos for three months. You can study with us for the rest of your life for 4,000 pesos. You can even study with us for just 3,500 pesos and your enrollment will be valid for a lifetime, okay? For more information about our promos, please visit our Facebook page. By the way, we also are giving away prizes like weekly winners of refund for your review fee and monthly winners of a free IELTS exam. We are even giving a discount to OET test takers. So special thanks to Alex Monge for the slide that I used for this particular presentation. I also want to give a shout out to Slides Carnival and Splash and Pixels for my presentation. Thank you so much for watching this presentation on true, false, not given, yes, no, not given. If you have questions for me, you can find me on Facebook. My work account is loan.viardo.73. For our company's official Facebook page, it's 9.09er official. You can also visit our website. It's ninerreview.com. With that, thank you so much. I think there's a student requesting for the answer key again. Please take a screenshot. Um, that concludes our session for tonight. Thank you so much, IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. I really love coming to this platform. I do hope that we were able to provide a lot of information to all our viewers around the world, Middle East, Canada, US, the Philippines. I love you so much, guys. So um, <laughs> thank you, boss. <laughs> you may make it sound like we're on a Jeep. <laughs> thank you, boss. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Miss Gladys, um, IFNG team, uh, anything else I can do for you guys? I think that's it. So um, if you have further questions, again, feel free to reach out to me directly via Facebook. All right. So I think we will be ending the meeting shortly. Let's just like wait for the go signal of our IFNG staff. Not sure if they're muted or... They're yes, sir. Thank oh, yeah. you. All right. Thank you, so, everyone. Yeah nag fluctuate yung net ni Miss Gladys. But anyways, thank you once again, Sir Lone, and to everyone. Thank you so much, and see you next on Friday and on uh, Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank Hope you. you learned something. Bye. Thank you, Sir Lone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. The Bye. father of topolism. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, Miss Jen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.